Hi everyone, um, so it's Sunday and uh, here I am back again. Um, you'll notice behind me I'm in a different venue today, uh, that's because I'm actually at my mum and dad's house. So um, I didn't want to obviously still uh, let the day pass without doing my videos as usual, so thus I, I've got a different location where I'm in today. But anyway, enough about that. Um, <laughs> it's time to talk about uh, the book I've been reading this week, which has been a reread for me, and that is Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary. This is, I think, either the third or fourth time that I've read it. It's been, God, it must be like five years since I last read it. It must be, um, at least. And um, it's, yeah, it's a very interesting book. Um, before I get into the, you know, realms of why it's so interesting. I better talk about what the book is about. The book follows a woman called Emma who um, meets her, um, this man who's a doctor after her father suffers an accident on the farm. He breaks his leg uh, and the doctor, Charles Bovary, comes to, to um, look after him and he is instantly taken with Emma and Emma accepts uh, his proposal of marriage, they get married, they move away, and it's all about her then going forward, what she goes on to do in her life, uh, and deal with this marriage to a man who she really doesn't like at all. And it, it, lots of lots of various things happen to Emma, but it's very clear from the beginning, especially when talking about her childhood and everything, she romanticises everything she always has and she has this thing about how everything has to be the best quality of anything that she she comes across in her, you know stuff with her marriage and then going on um you know various things everything has to be the best and um not long after they marry they go to a ball that he's invited to um by and she meets a viscount there and they have this wonderful dance together and it's really it's really there that you can really feel this fire um just ignite in her that is something that she she has to um try to be those ladies those those gowns the you know the fabrics they were wearing the smell of their perfume she even um well pretty much she steals um a cigar case i believe it is that the v count from what i can recall that the the v count had um and she keeps smelling it opening it and smelling it and going you know this was our oh, v count in everything she just has and she carries it around with her it's just something that she has to have and every time she in a sense meets a standard of what she wants to be in this certain situation or or to buy or something she has to better it every single time. Now this leads her on a very interesting path because she has this um, issue with money. Um, a lot of um, the story of Madame Bovary covers Emma getting into more and more debt trying to cover it up from you know from her husband and um, dealing with creditors and what well, actually the purchasing credit from various people to pay off debts and then having to deal with creditors with her husband having absolutely no idea what is going on. At the same time, she also has um, these men that keep on coming into her life, two in particular, uh, Leon and Randolph, who uh, they kind of catch at her at various different times. Um, well, Leon appears twice in the picture. He's the first man um, that she comes across in the new place where she's living with her husband, this little village. Um, and he's a student. He's wanting to go to Paris. He's wanting to better himself and um, study law and all this lot. And she's very taken by him and he's very taken by her. But then he goes off to, you know, be a student. He can't offer any her anything anyway. And he, he knows that. And that, so he goes off to be a student. And at the same time, uh, oh, well, sorry, straight after that, this man called Randolph com comes into the picture who is stunning and he's got all this wealth and he has all, you know, various powers and all these things, all these qualities that just stirs, um, uh, stirs her. She, uh, uh, Emma, she, she is just instantly taken with him. She has to, she becomes very obsessive over him um, and their um, various, you know, relationship, which at times is, you know, very passionate and then it's, you know, very harsh and very angry and they're fighting and then, you know, 
and then you know um, being together and all this like it kind of goes here there and everywhere their relationship uh and then Leon comes back into the picture, but now he's older, he's not a student anymore, he sees things in a different way. And um, so she has all of these feelings for these different men around her, steadily getting into debt. She also has a daughter throughout the, the course of the um, the book who is fathered by her husband. Um, because she, uh, when they turn up in the, this village, she is pregnant and has no idea. And she believes that motherhood, she's going to be really great at it, uh, and everything. She's going to be perfectly fine. Her daughter's going to have all the finest things. She, she buys all of these really expensive, um, things like you know, a bed and all the best cloths and the pram and all this lot. And she finds motherhood is nothing like she wanted it to be or how she thought she was going to be. And she has a very, um, I guess strange is the best way to describe it, relationship with her daughter, because it's kind of, she loves her, she loves that she's there, but she can't really be around her. She, she, so uh, Emma is, is kind of a, a real oddball character in that she has all of these conflicting, you know, things going on. But the key thing about Emma is that she romanticises everything and it leads to her downfall. And it, it, this... The decisions that she makes in this book are very interesting. I understand, I kind of understand why she does what she does at the end of the book. I'm not going to say what it is. If you want to, you know, find out, read the book or look up on Wikipedia or something. Um, but yeah, I can understand why she does it. But at the same time, it is kind of so, for me, it feels kind of wrong for her to do that because of, it, it does, it does, kind of feel like she's of all of her possible options that that was the one why she felt that one was the best option but then I don't know I've never been in a situation like her so I don't know I can't really in a sense judge her for it but at the same time I do kind of feel like she could have taken other options and as it's, it's that thing she was so heartbroken she couldn't see a way out um of a situation you know it's it's the path that she chose and that and I do like about this book that after that has happened you learn about the repercussions of it how it affects her husband how it affects her daughter how it affects everybody in the village for years and years and years to come and it's so tragic so tragic ending um I don't know if um Flaubert was um intending it to be that tragic it's kind of like in you know in comparison to another classic book on the tragic scale it's kind of like for me like Tess of the D'Urbervilles where it's nobody gets a happy ending nobody um there's no light at the end of the tunnel but maybe that's what he wanted he wanted this piece to say you know not all stories have um have happy endings not all lives are rainbows and happy events and all that lot um but yeah it's it's a very interesting ending to a book i don't necessarily agree with what emma did um but i kind of understand why she did it but I, yeah i always feel i i don't i don't I have this really weird relationship with emma in that sometimes i really like her i really understand where she's coming from i understand the you know kind of when you're young and want to romanticize what marriage will be like and all that lot just like everybody does when you know when that age and everything i can understand her um the way she is then but when she goes into marriage and such and you expect a maturity to set in and it doesn't set in you can just see that it's going to lead to to catastrophic events um and it's going to be her ultimate downfall and that's what happens um now about Flaubert's writing I have completely forgotten how his writing style it's been that long since I last read read this book and when I picked it up I was really surprised I can't believe I actually forgot because it, it was so it was quite hard to read, if I'm honest, even though I've read it a couple of times before. And the reason why is because there's about 50 pages before anybody says a word. No joke. And whenever somebody speaks, it's indicated by little dashes against the page. I don't know if you can you can see that. We see little dashes uh, there and there to indicate where someone's speaking. 
but even so even though they've got that that dash there sometimes that dash the paragraph is like that long because he's done a mixture of what they're saying plus extra information that he's noted like how they're crossing the room or whatever but he does it as one long sentence so you don't have and you have because with no speech marks or anything you have no um indication as to where the break in their speeches so it is kind of a bit um disruptive a read in the way that he's written it um it, yeah you learn a lot i mean with with the beginning it begins with following charles bovary um the doctor her, her husband to be uh and follows him throughout his school and and everything and him meeting emma and all that lot and it's, and it's pretty much you have all of his backstory him meeting emma falling in love with her proposing her accepting and then their marriage before anybody says a word i'm not joking you it is it's there's so much happening in this story before anybody says a word so when i see you know adaptations or anything of it you know it's quite that must be so hard for the person who's adapting it to be able to um you know what dialogue do you choose because you have no indication about from you know the occasional bit in the descriptions to say he was not happy with that or something which you could go off but you have no idea what they said you have no idea what they would you know necessarily going to say as characters or anything so that must be so hard i have to say um but yeah, it felt quite tough. But then I've had a tough week with, you know, various things at work and all that lot. And so I've been going, you know, working as many hours as possible and coming home absolutely exhausted. So maybe it was my exhausted stay each day as well, which didn't help matters, which made it tough for me to um, get through it. But I got through it. I mean, I was glad I got through it. I was, I, the, yeah, maybe it was the fact that I had forgotten how it was written because it's been so long since I last read it. And perhaps that there is a reason why it's been so long since I last read it because of the writing style that it's a very good read. The it's an interesting plot, quite you know, quite interesting. So many intriguing things happen in this book. I I I absolutely adore adore Charles, um, her husband. I think he's a wonderful character, and for what happens to Emma and then subsequently to him as we learn in the end of the book uh, and their daughter it's so sad so so sad and I don't know what necessary Flaubert was trying to say with this book but you know maybe it was just that thing of don't romanticize about life and don't get yourself in debt I don't know um but I think with Emma's story she was she was a girl who just never looked at the realities of life she always you know tried to see it as something more than what it was or what it, uh, it was capable of being so it led her you know to have affairs because that was what her romanticized brain said had to be done it led her to buy the most expensive stuff because that's what her brain told her you know all the best women wear this clothing. You're you're the best woman in the world. Wear it and don't care about the price. Yeah, you, know, you, you, you know it. It's a very it's very intriguing, and it, I suppose you could say it is still you know relatable to modern times. People getting heavily into debt and everything, um, especially now with social media and all that lot and magazines being shoved under our nose, left, right, and centre, telling us or showing us you know the um what perfection is in you know magazines and adverts and all that lot and striving to be rich to be the best thing possible to be famous and reality tv stars and all this lot in order to get what you need um so maybe in that regard madame bovary is a very modern piece um yeah and is a very interesting character and i'm sure there may be you know around the world some emmas out there that uh, you know is still is still with us and everything, and you know it's a case of the choices that we make. I suppose Flaubert was trying to was trying to say it will lead us to you know our happiness and also our downfall. So choose carefully. Mm.
Now, the drama I absolutely love by the BBC. I forgot to pick up the DVD before I left my house, so I don't have it with me. I would hold it up. Um, but it's the 2000 adaptation with, um, I've got the cast here, sorry, I'm glancing down. Look at it. So, Francis O'Connor, Hugh Bonneville, Eileen Atkins, and Hugh Dancy. Uh, Francis O'Connor plays um, Emma, Hugh Bonneville is Charles, Eileen Atkinson is Charles's mother, Marie Louise, and Hugh Dancy is Leon. It's wonderful. It's the drama that kind of led me to the book because I've seen clips of the drama um, around, but I'd never um, read the book. And I'm one of those people that I have to read the book before I watch a drama if possible. So I picked up the book and read it and then watched the drama. And the drama is fantastic. Um, Heidi Thomas, who's done loads of um, BBC adaptations, um, she's she's currently, uh, you know, the big, you know, really famous writer for doing... Um, Call the Midwife uh, for the BBC, which is like going into its like seventh or eighth series, uh, you know, in um, at Christmas. So you know, she's really, really good at it, good at it. And this this particular drama is is very good, um, really well acted. This it's at, the way that it captures certain scenes, like when she meets the Viscount and dancing with him, all the way through to the very end. There's there's lovely moments throughout the entire drama. The music sensation. I love the music, um, and yeah, the 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 acting, the set design, the costume, everything is beautiful drama. So if you're able to get a hold of it, it's the BBC two thousand production of um, Madame Bovary. I really strongly recommend it. Okay, I can't think of anything else to say, so I'll stop there. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys, for watching. Um, if you want to leave me a comment. You got. You can leave me one in the comment box below, or if you want to show uh, your thoughts another way, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Entirely up to you. I'd love to know if you've read this book and if you agree with me or disagree with me. Whatever, just let me know. And uh, I will be back soon with my video announcing what I'm going to be reading next week. All right then, guys. Bye.